Hey guys, it's Allison. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my January favorites. It's so funny to me how different I feel like me and a lot of people felt on January 1st to January 31st and especially with this year in particular. So I think it's safe to say that January was the longest year ever and we are ready to move on to February. So I'm not particularly consistent with like favorites videos. I feel like some months I love a lot of things, some months I don't really have anything new to talk about. But I was filling out my planner and what I really like about it is that there is a section for a place to put different favorites that you have. And I was filling that out in my planner and getting really excited about everything that I loved in January, so I had to make this video. So my first favorite is the planner in question, and it is the Doodle Planner from Amanda Rach Lee here on YouTube. I have mine in gray, and I think it's just like a really pretty, classy, very hefty planner. Like, there are a lot of pages in here, and the paper is very thick, and so the planner is a lot thicker than I thought it was going to be. Amanda is the queen of bullet journaling, and I actually started watching her YouTube videos a couple of years ago when she was making fashion beauty videos, so it was really cool to see her make the switch to art and bullet journaling and really see her channel take off. I thought this planner was a brilliant idea because I've tried bullet journaling in the past. I do it like very sporadically and not really fitting to a certain like theme or structure. Everyone has their own way of like organizing and planning things out. For me, writing everything out in a bullet journal or planner just really isn't how I work. But when I have a lot of things going on or when I wanna make a particular effort to balance my work and YouTube or I'm traveling or something, a planner is actually really nice. And by planner, I just mean like having a physical medium. It doesn't have to be like a planner or just a blank journal. So I love bullet journaling because of all of the creativity that goes in into it and there's a lot of really cool spreads that people make like habit trackers and mood trackers and stuff like that. And so basically I just kind of like those workflows that it offers but I never actually had the motivation or the time to just really like sit down every week to like draw out these trackers and like fill them out every night. So when Amanda came out with this planner that's basically a filled out bullet journal, I was really excited because I basically got the best of both worlds. So I'm not gonna lie, this planner hasn't like changed the way I work. I still don't actually write in this every single day, but I really enjoyed all of the little prompts that it has. I spent some time filling this out for my like 2019 reflection and 2019 and 2020 goals. My favorite spreads are the monthly habit trackers and mood trackers and the other one is this monthly goals page and the favorite section and then this is just like a blank spread where I wrote down some video ideas. But the four categories of favorites that I decided to write down are food, beauty, and fashion, things, and activity. So those are the categories that I'm going to be going over in the video today and for things it is this planner. For beauty and fashion, I have a couple of things to talk about, and the first one is a new sunscreen that I've been trying. So I'm still using all fungal acne safe skincare, and I was running out of the sunscreen that I had been using mostly, which was the APU Subuji Sun Cotton. So I picked up this one by a brand called Dermatology, spelled without the vowels, and it says Dermatology Medical Grade Skincare. It's a broad spectrum SPF 45. It is anti-aging, protects against UV rays, high purity niacinamide, and hyaluronic acid, and transparent zinc oxide. So this is actually a hybrid chemical physical sunscreen. It does have 12% zinc oxide, and it also has 7.5% octanoxate. And basically I've been using the sunscreen every day since I got it, and I've been loving it. The problem with most sunscreens that contain zinc oxide and titanium dioxide is that they can get a bit chalky and of course have that like white cast to it. But I find the sunscreen to have a really nice texture. It's kind of like a white milky cream, I would say, and it actually leaves my skin looking very dewy and nice. I would say that this texture is kind of similar to the Crave Beauty Beat the Sun, but this one is just a little bit thicker and a little bit harder to blend because of the zinc oxide in it. When you're spreading it out on your face, it is white, but I don't find that it leaves a white cast at all. It's honestly really easy to blend out and I love the finish that it gives my skin. And I personally really like that it has niacinamide. I feel like niacinamide almost gives that 
kind of smoothing appearance to your skin. So yeah, I've been really loving this. I think I like it more than the Subuji Sun Cotton. I went back to using the APU sunscreen because I just wanted to finish it up completely. And I found the texture of it to just be a lot thicker than this one. And that one does have added fragrance, which I also found to be quite strong after using this for a while. For makeup, I have three favorites. And the first one is a concealer. This one is a rediscovery. It's by the Korean brand, The Sem and it's their Cover Perfection Tip Concealer. When I had this concealer before, I had the shade 1.5, and I found that it just oxidized a little bit too dark and orange for my skin tone. So they like somewhat recently expanded the shade range, and I was able to pick up 1.25, which is like the perfect match for me. This concealer is so high coverage, and it's the best concealer that I've ever used for covering blemishes. I'm not wearing this concealer today, and you can probably see some of the more stubborn spots on my skin, I have like one right here and one over here that is pretty hard for me to cover most of the time, which isn't always a bad thing, honestly. If you can see your skin underneath your complexion products, it's gonna look a lot more natural. But there are times where I really wish I could cover these spots a little bit more, and this one has worked the best for me. I think this, in combination with my Bourjois Healthy Mix Serum Foundation, is like my match made in heaven. However, this concealer isn't fungal acne safe, and I'm gonna try to use a Milwaukee Safe Concealer for a while to see, I don't know, if it makes a difference in my skin. I have discovered my new Holy Grail Brow Gel, and it's the M Cosmetics Brow Cream. I don't know what it was, but I feel like no one was talking about this product all throughout 2019 after it was launched, but then when their 2019 favorites videos came out, I heard this product mentioned so many times. What sets this brow gel apart from all of the other brow gels is the applicator. It's so much thinner than all of the other brow gel wands out there, and it's also a little bit longer. And because of the shape of the applicator, it doesn't have that same problem where you pull the wand out and it has so much product on it. The shape also makes it super easy to like really grab onto every little hair in your eyebrow and you can place it exactly where you want it. The formula on the product is also really great. I feel like it's something that you could put through your brows without any other product and it'll make your brows look a lot better. And it also keeps your brows in place all day. My last makeup favorite of January is the Victoria Beckham Lid Luster in the shade Mink. Now, I honestly haven't even used this product that much since I've gotten it. However, this product and the Victoria Beckham Beauty brand as a whole were such a standout to me that I had to include it in my favorites. So one thing I wasn't really aware of when I first heard about the brand was their commitment to being sustainable. And that's something that I've seen a lot more in the fashion industry where a lot of new brands are trying to be as sustainable and ethical as possible. But for a beauty brand, I can't really think of any other company that's really made an effort in that department. When you get your package in the mail, it comes in a box that has a nice little reusable drawstring bag, but the padding that they actually use in the packaging is some sort of fiber that I hadn't seen used in any other packaging that I've seen before. And the crazy thing is that that packaging material will dissolve if you put it underwater. That whole process just made me think like, why isn't every company doing this? But as for the product itself, I really love this lid luster and I hope she comes out with more colors, especially like a bronze color, that would be amazing. I was absolutely floored when I swatched this. It's honestly like the most beautiful thing I've ever swatched. It's just so dimensional and smoky and glittery and when you blend it out, it doesn't just like disappear into nothing. It just reveals like a new side of the product and more of like a warmer undertone. And it's honestly just so beautiful. Okay, so next up, I wanted to mention a couple of clothing favorites. The first ones are these thrifted cardigans, like the one I'm wearing right now. And also this one right here, they're both actually purple. <laughs> I feel like they're really unique and they're also really on trend right now. I like the neckline on this one where it kind of has like a kind of scoop neck right here, but then it goes down into a V. And it's made out of this like really textured material that kind of looks like Sherpa. When I found this at the thrift store, I wasn't actually sure if I would like it because it's not actually very soft to the touch, but it is really squishy and it's not hard or itchy at all. And it actually keeps me really warm and cozy. This other one is one that I hauled in a previous thrift haul that I will link, but it's just a really gorgeous lavender color. And it has these amazing pearl buttons on it that really remind me of some like French clothing brands. Also because I got these at the thrift store, they were super duper cheap. My last clothing favorite of the month is my favorite piece of outerwear. I was going on and on about how much I needed some like long wool coats. And yes, I've been loving them and wearing 
wearing those a lot but this is definitely the jacket that I've been reaching for the most. It is this cream hooded puffer jacket that I got from Abercrombie and Fitch and this has been such a great purchase. I reach for it all the time especially when I know it's just really cold outside and I want something that's going to be really easy to throw on that's going to match with whatever I'm wearing. It's super cozy because it's lined with some really soft fleece and I also think it's just really cute. I never feel like I am sacrificing the cuteness of my outfit whenever I wear this. Okay, so the last two categories are more personal and local to me and those are the like food and activities categories. So for my favorite activity of January, it was going tide pooling at Santa Cruz. There's something that my boyfriend sent me that's called the king tide. So it's basically when the ocean levels are the highest but also the lowest that they ever go. We went there in the afternoon during low tide and it was really cool. The beach was just so much larger than it usually is and there were a bunch of people and kids and dogs running around and just like looking at little tide pools and you could see like little shrimps and little sea anemones and I feel like the ocean and marine life are just so cool and are things that like you don't really experience in your life very much. So I'm super lucky that I live in California and I'm able to do these things and walking around and looking into those tide pools was definitely a highlight of the month for me. For my food favorites of the month, I was actually going through January and I was eating a lot of good food but nothing was really standing out as something that I wanted to write down as my favorite. But towards the end of the month, I ate some things that really blew my mind and are things that I definitely recommend you guys check out if you live in the Bay Area. My first few places that I want to mention are actually places that I ate at on the same night, but we were on our way to get tacos for dinner and then we stopped by this place called Arizmendi Pizza which caught my eye because I had heard of it before. We tried a couple of pastries, which were all pretty good, but the pizza is definitely what I want to highlight. Similar to a lot of other popular pizza places in the Bay Area, they make one kind of pizza every day and they just change out the toppings and they're all vegetarian. So that day, the pizza toppings were something like purple cabbage, mozzarella, queso fresca, and some jalapenos, I think. And the toppings were great, but just in general, that slice of pizza was so perfect. It was just like so crispy and crunchy, but not overdone or hard or anything. It wasn't too soggy. It was just the best slice of pizza that I've had in a while. So after it was Mendy, we went to the taco place, which is actually my second favorite, and it's called Rico Rico Tacos. I would say the place is kind of like a new American kind of Californian Mexican restaurant. They serve the tacos on these corn tortillas that they make in-house and the ingredients are all really fresh and so delicious. We tried a bunch of tacos, but I would say that my top three favorites were the crispy fish taco, the carne asada, and the carnitas taco. Lastly, I have a sweet tooth and I've always got to have my dessert. So my third favorite are actually the mochi donuts from Third Culture Bakery. There's a place called Moto Donuts that's based in Hawaii that specializes in mochi donuts and they have had pop-ups in the Bay Area. And those donuts are amazing, especially because you have to like wait in line because they make the donuts to order essentially so they come out super fresh. So those are definitely my top top mochi donuts and I was really excited when I heard that Third Culture Bakery was going to start making mochi donuts as well. I first tried them when they started making them I want to say like at least six months ago and I was actually disappointed. They were just a lot more dense and definitely not crispy like the fresh moto donuts that I had before. But I recently stopped by Third Culture Bakery and decided to pick up a bunch of treats to take home. And I'm so glad that I did because the mochi donut recipe has definitely been improved and the donuts were a lot lighter and chewier and yummier. And they also just look so cute and they have the best flavors. My favorite one out of the ones I got was actually the Japanese milk tea flavor. So that wraps up my favorites for January. If you've stuck around, thank you so much for watching. Leave me a comment below with your favorite thing that you ate last month. I just love talking and hearing about food. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!